After that little introduction this evening, I was really hoping I would have had my cell phone on me so I could have pulled it out myself and checked the score. But thank goodness I don't have it with me. As I mentioned at the beginning of the Mass, we're really about perseverance in prayer, perseverance in coming to know and to understand the Scriptures. That's really the theme of our readings this evening, and it's the call that we have continually to enter into a deeper relationship with the Lord through a well-solid, or excuse me, well-founded prayer life, one that is persistent, one that carries us forward into a deeper relationship with God. You know, and I think about that persistence. You know, obviously, if we're going to go on a diet, it doesn't do any good to do it for a week or two. You have to be very persistent if you're going to go on a diet, if it's going to do you any good. If you're going to get some exercise and try to get your body better in shape, it doesn't do any good to go to a gym oh, once a month or so. No, it takes a consistency about it. When I go to the gym, I see so many individuals there who are so intense and so persistent about trying to take care of their physical body. And that's good. God wants us to take care of our bodies, but He also wants us to take care of our soul. And when we think about that persistence, I, I can't help but think of, of Father Nathan, our former associate. You know, Father Nathan, about two years ago, decided to take up running. Now, by his own body, he's not really made as a runner. He really doesn't have a running gait. But nevertheless, he was very, very persistent in his running. And he would go out three or four or five times a week and would run. And gradually, he got better and he got, was able to get, have better endurance. And he kept going. And he just showed that persistence, that perseverance that is so important and necessary. And last Sunday, Father Nathan ran in and completed the Chicago Marathon. That was remarkable that he was able to do that. He said it was the hardest thing he's ever done in his life. <laughs> but he completed it. And it was his persistence, his perseverance in using what God had given him in order to move forward. We can use him as an example for all of us that we need to persevere in prayer. We need to really truly have a discipline, a prayer within our lives. That's what is spoken about in the readings today as we are called to enter a relationship with God, not just on Sundays when we come to Mass, but rather to live that day in and day out. We can't just eat once a week. You know, fill up on Sunday and then feel we're going to have the strength to go through the rest of the week. It doesn't work that way, either physically or spiritually. And I'm really edified how many people really work hard at the prayer life. I know of so many individuals and couples who spend time every day reflecting upon the Scripture readings for that day. We print them in the bulletin every week. But people take time to think about, to pray about those Scripture readings. They take time to spend some time in prayer together of allowing the Lord truly to be at the heart of their relationship. How many people are so faithful about Eucharistic adoration, about praying the rosary, a decade of the rosary, or maybe five decades of the rosary, every day. Whatever that prayer life might be, we need to have a certain discipline around it. I know that spontaneous prayer is one that's kind of encouraged these days. You know, feel like, feel, uh, when you feel like it, then pray. Well, that's good, but we all need a discipline of prayer as well. We need to have some set prayers, a morning offering, a time in the evening, when we reflect in terms of gratitude, of sorrow, of prayer for the next day, whatever that form of prayer may be for us, we need to persevere in prayer. That's the message. That's the challenge that we all have. And it's not just a putting in the time, but it's rather allowing God's Word to transform us, as is mentioned in that second reading today. 
It's allowing our prayer to form us that we may be more open to God's presence and God's will within our life. It's about that call to transformation, to become that new person in Christ Jesus. That truly is what our scripture reflections, what our prayer is all about. Another thought that I had this evening as I read that gospel was the very, very last line of Jesus. It's a curious line, and it really doesn't go with the rest of the reading, where Jesus just asked a question. When the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the earth? An interesting question. When the second coming comes about, will the Son of Man, Jesus, find faith on the earth? It's a challenge because we kind of take it for granted that faith is going to be there, that we're going to always continue to have this gift of faith. But we only have that gift if it's truly cultivated, if it's continued to be nourished and allowed to be shared with others, with future generations. I think of so many areas of of our world where there is no faith or very, very little these days. All of Northern Africa used to be Christian, Catholic. The Middle East used to be Catholic. Turkey used to be Catholic and Orthodox. And all those places have been transformed Western Europe used to be at the bulwark of Christianity. And now because of secularism, they talk about it in being in a post-Christian era, that it has passed away. And the reality is, there's only one guarantee about the continuance of faith in God. And that is, as the present generation shares with the next, I remember hearing a saying one time that really kind of brought it home starkly to me, and that is that in any period of time, the church is only one generation away from extinction. Only one generation away from extinction. Because if parents and grandparents do not share faith and really nurture that relationship with God, And it's not just teaching religious truths or religious instructions, but truly forming a relationship with God, then it will become extinct. Then it will pass away. And that question of Jesus will have a negative rather than the positive answer. Jesus truly wants that positive answer. Yes, when he comes into our lives, He will find faith because we live it each day, because we share it with each other, because we nurture it in our young, a true relationship with the Lord. 